During the War of 1812, pistols and sabers were only issued to dragoons. The prominent pistol used was the Model 1805 flintlock pistol. These were 56-inch caliber, muzzle-loaded smoothbore pistols. The most common saber provided was the Star Saber, with two R's. They had an iron blade and hilt, with a leather scabbard. With only a handful of dragoons called into service, not many of these weapons were used, and swords and pistols were mainly becoming infantry officers' weapons. The army had a school at West Point which provided a solid core of professional artillerists and engineers. The British army, on the other hand, was already engaged with Napoleon in Spain and Portugal in the Peninsula War. They were also blockading France and her allies around Europe. This caused a lack of regulars in Canada, only 1,600 to be exact. Knowing they were outnumbered, they wanted to avoid a war with America. Eight months prior to the war, the British urged the Commander-in-Chief, Sir George Prevost, to maintain a defensive strategy focusing on Lower Canada because it was easier to defend against the Americans if war was declared. So the 41st Regiment of British regulars were reinforced, the Provincial Marines moved into Lake Ontario, and Sir Isaac Brock made a policy to make alliances with the First Nations. The policy made little room for offensive actions, but as soon as the war broke out, the Administrator of Upper Canada, Major General Sir Isaac Brock, was not prepared to simply wait passively for the Americans to act. He believed a bold military stroke would galvanize the population and encourage the First Nations to come to his aid. Unlike the traditional use of the Line Infantry Regiment in other armies throughout Europe, British regiments were set up in an administration format compared to a military format. Each battalion of the regiment were assigned to a different theater of war. Each battalion has 10 companies of roughly 100 men. A company was commanded by a captain, assisted by a number of lieutenants, ensigns, and non-commissioned officers. Before I get too far ahead of myself, I should tell you what kind of troops these are and what do they do. Line infantry, which was the majority of the two armies, were foot soldiers drawn up side by side in rigid alignments of four ranks in long lines normally four deep. The line infantry used three types of formation to maximize their effectiveness on the battlefield, the line, the square, and the column. The line was used because of the relatively short range at which smoothbore muskets could accurately hit their target. Added to the slower reload time of 2-3 to three rounds per minute made it that mass formation firing was essential for maximizing the shock. The objective of this mass fire was to cause the enemy formation to rout, which plunges it into disarray even though it was less effective than causing actual casualties. The square was used to defend the line infantry from cavalry, consisting of four lines in a square shape that were too deep. The first rank would charge their bayonet, which is to point it ahead of them and brace it on either the ground or their waist. The second rank would shoot at the incoming cavalry, which would dissuade the horses from charging towards the sharp objects and the riders to be either shot by the inner square or thrown from their mount into the square to be dispatched by the infantry. This formation is not unlike the shield run of, of earlier pike units. The final formation I will discuss is the column. This would be used when the unit needs to move for a long time. The line would simply fold itself in half. This was used because moving in the line was very slow. Unless the battalion was superbly trained, a breakdown in cohesion was virtually assured, especially in any kind of uneven or wooded terrain. And so the line and square and the column was used for either moving or in combat to go into a charge. Two other types of infantry that were prominent in this time period were grenadiers and skirmishers. Grenadiers were originally meant to throw grenades, which at the time were iron cases filled with gunpowder with a slow burning wick to use as a fuse. So these troops were meant to use these grenades to clear fortifications, but around the time of the War of 1812, they were used to lead the assault in enemy positions during the charge. These were chosen out of the most physically powerful and tall soldiers. This combined with the tall hats of their uniform was meant to intimidate the enemy. Both the line infantry and grenadiers were given orders through the chaos of battle through snare drums and high-pitched flutes called fifes. The final type of troop I will discuss is the light company, or skirmishers. They were deployed ahead of the regiment and in a spread-out formation to take pot shots at valuable targets such as the NCOs and officers of the regiment in order to harass and delay them and break up cohesion. 
Light Company and Skirmishers had the ability to run from enemy melee engagements. With such mobile tactics, they were impossible to give orders to, and so they had some degree of autonomy on the battlefield. Their main job was to cover the grenadiers and line infantry as they advanced, while in turn they would be protected from other infantry by the grenadiers and, and line infantry. They would be the smallest and fastest and best marksmen of the battalion, or infantry unit. They would be either dressed in civilian clothes or early camouflage. Greatly outnumbered, they have almost five times more men. 